Hey guys, John here. Today we're in Avenger 2, and today we're going to be walking through a patch I was working on till like, man, I want to say 2.30 in the morning. I get kind of in that creepy mode, so I start making creepy patches, and especially play them in the harmonic minor. So this is what we're going to be walking through today. Notice that nice little creepy reverb tail there, which is a lot of fun. So, okay, this one's actually relatively simple to make. There's just some key components, some good techniques that we can follow. So if you already have some different expansions for Avenger, not only do you get the presets, the sequences, all the cool stuff with those expansions, but you also get samples, wavetables, shapes, a lot of cool stuff as well. So I thought, what can I do using the Synthwave 4 pack and make something kind of interesting from the ingredients that you get? And this is what resulted. So let's kind of walk through this a little bit as well. If you have Synthwave 4, then you can totally follow along and kind of rebuild this with me. So for example, we have two oscillators here. That's literally, it's nothing too crazy. So if we sell this oscillator, let's disable our effects and our modulation. So we have something kind of like this here. And we have a little bit of noise here. So let's bring this down. This is at 17. Let's bring that down to zero for now. So this is the dry sample that we're playing with. And that's one of the cool parts about the packs as well is that you get a lot of these cool ingredients and the samples sound fantastic and you can make so many different patches from the ingredients that you get with the packs. So. So we have this here and I was thinking, okay, bells for some reason to me always sound creepy and unsettling. I don't know why that is. So I kind of just follow that timeline. So for example, we have this bell here and I thought, how can I make this even creepier than it already sounds to me? And a cool technique I like doing is getting a random LFO and just moving the pitch, kind of wobbling it. So it's never really stable in the same place, which is what this LFO is doing here. So if we turn this guy on, let's take a listen to that. See how it kind of wobbles there. And we can see it here on the fine tuning. So if we look at this LFO here, we can see that if we hover our mouse over, this is gonna be on the random tri shape. So it's not really a step one, it's kind of smooth and just random moving through different values. And it's not synced to anything. The rate here is gonna be 8.92 Hertz, which is fast, but not too fast. You still get that nice wobbliness to it. And you could even go a step further if you get another LFO to modulate this rate here. So the speed always kind of changes as well. You can do that if you'd like to. some Silent Hill there and it works perfect for that. So we have this guy and this one's pretty much there. And then we add a little bit of noise. So I think it's like 16 or 17% here. And if we right click, the actual color of the noise is negative 42.22. I didn't want it so hissy, just kind of there. So that's the first oscillator and both of these are getting sent to the same filter. Now this one's on the Anna Low Pass 12 and our cutoff is about a little over 8K, so 8,055.33 if you wanna be exact. And then our resonance is at 25% and then envelope modulation is at 19.56%. So we have that here. So now let's take a look at our second oscillator. So this one is gonna be a wavetable and it sounds like this here. And to me, it almost sounds a little bit kind of uh, like a formant sound. There's almost a human voice kind of there somewhere if you really listen for it. Maybe I'm just crazy. Is the voice in the room with us right now? Okay, so we have that here. So now if we click this, we can find this here under the wavetables category down on Synthwave 4, and it's going to be this Vibron, Vibron Glock here. So we load this guy up, and we can see this moving here. So if we close this, we can look at our wavetable. And then here, this is not attached to any speed. The speed is actually very slow at 0 0.03. So we can see this just moving very, very slowly. And the trigger is going to be on voice here as well. So yeah, nothing too crazy for this one. We have that. And we're also doing the fine tuning modulation that we did on the first oscillator here. So it's kind of doing the exact same thing for both of them. So 
if we play these together. So, and then if we look at our volumes here, so the first one is basically gonna be the default 100% volume and the second one, so this wave table here is kind of just supporting the actual, the actual bell sound. And after the bell kind of passes through because it's a very attacky sound, then we get kind of left with the wave table. So we can kind of play this as a plucked sound or we can also play this as kind of an extended, longer kind of playing sound. So if we played a chord, we get the attack of those bells, but we can still hear the wave table moving. Okay, so we have this here, and now let's take a look at our effects. So that's also equally important, so we're gonna turn all these on and kinda turn these off and go one by one. So the first one, generally I would put an EQ, but I felt like this one just sounded okay. I didn't really feel like I wanted to change anything to it. Unless I put it in a mix, then that could change, but for now we have a little bit of compression going on. A little bit of a tickle here as well, if you see that there. Okay, and then we go to a delay. So let's turn this guy on. Which definitely helps fatten up the sound here. Now we're gonna be on the default ping pong. Feedback is also gonna be default 50. And then we're just doing a little bit of filtering here. So cutting it at 790. And then on the top end about 14K, 14, 270K. And then yeah, the mix is gonna be 30%. And we can do a little bit of modulation for these delays that might actually kind of contribute to the creepiness of the sound. Actually sounds kind of cool. So we got that, that's pretty awesome. And then we go to the reverb. Now this is kind of the icing on the cake, right? Cause we want the sound to be big and a big space, reverby and just kind of there, right? But we also have the shimmer effect. Now, something that's really cool about shimmer is if you want something nice and ethereal and beautiful, of course, shimmer is going to work. But if you want to go the exact opposite way, bring down your shimmer by one semitone and then just kind of increase the shimmer feedback. And then you're going to get that weird, creepy kind of falling reverb. <laughs> See what I'm talking about? So some of the settings here, we're gonna be on haul. The time is gonna be 62.22. Pre-delay is about 17.5. And then again, like the shimmer, like I was talking about negative one. And then we have quite a lot of feedback for the shimmer. So 90 on this guy. And then we have some, just some filtering going on here. So 236 on the low end and on the high end, we're at about 16K. And the modulation is going to be 21.11 and the mix is 34.44. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to play this patch. especially in a harmonic minor scale. So that one's not too difficult to make. I think a lot of it has to deal with just kind of combining the cool samples and then kind of finding the vision. We want this creepy. So we start modulating the pitch that always kind of works there and then make some creepy reverb and then maybe the delay adding that modulation to the delay also kind of adds to that creepy vibe. So once this is kind of done, then we can kind of think, what do we want on macro? So we could put the filter here. So we could change the filter to have this more of a darker sound. <laughs> be kind of interesting. And then there's maybe some other things too. Maybe we can mess with different settings here. Maybe the sync, which actually, oh, that's right. I did add some of the sync here. To, <laughs> this setting is always kind of interesting. If you ever have a cool patch, just try to add a little bit of sync to it. You might be surprised how cool the results are. So if we solo this guy here and took the sync away, so we're at 4.44%.
gives it a nice kind of little edge to it. And what I might even do as well is if I'm here on this oscillator, so we could probably use another macro. So for example, I can go into our zones and the first one we know is gonna be the bell, which we should probably label that. But in case you didn't, we can maybe use macro two. And then we can drag and drop this to the level. And if we look down here on the mixer, we can bring the oscillator all the way down. And then in our modulation matrix, we can bring this up here and then kind of decide where we want that in. So maybe probably 50% or so. So we can start mixing in the bell if we want to, or we can take it out entirely. And we just have the wavetable. which is also a very cool sound. But there you go. So maybe think of some other things that you could put on macros or some of the macro buttons are also pretty helpful. So yeah, thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something and check out the other stuff that you get with your expansions. You're gonna be kind of surprised how much stuff you actually get and that you can put together in a recipe and make some really cool patches out of those. So not only do you get those presets, but you also get the ingredients, which is actually really, really cool. So thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.